All right, y'all, it is time to rank some quarterbacks ahead of the 2024 NFL season. I'm going to be ranking every single expected starter slash rookie heading in to the 2024 NFL season. Fired up to get into it. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. I'm Jordan DeLugo. This is Rogue Football. So I'm going to have some fun with this. To me, there are rankings, right? But the most important thing to me here is the tiers. Those are what really are more important. Those kind of set the stage for what these quarterbacks are, the buckets that they're being dropped into. And these tiers are franchise elevators, right? Quarterbacks you consistently win because of. Upper echelon starters is the next tier. Quarterbacks that you can win because of in the right situation. Next tier is the good starters tier. Quarterbacks you can win with in the right situation. Then there's the maybe tier, only has a couple guys in it. Quarterbacks where I really just don't know what to think yet. The rookie tier, these players are rookies that I expect to start for a good portion of the season. And then there's the replacement level starters tier. You might be able to compete with these guys if the situation around them is like absolutely perfect, but you really do need to find a new quarterback. So we're going to go ahead and dive into it. Really appreciate y'all. If you enjoy the content here, please like subscribe, hit that notification bell. All right. So franchise elevator tier features eight quarterbacks right now for me. Again, these are players that you are going to consistently win because of in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes, obviously, the GOAT. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, CJ Stroud, and Jordan Love. These are my top eight quarterbacks in the NFL right now and the franchise elevators. Patrick Mahomes, he's the GOAT. We've seen him go through so many different iterations already of what he is as a quarterback, right? You've seen him go from being this just absolute magician out there who's consistently hitting deep balls down the field, you know, throwing it to Tyreek Hill uh, with great success. Then he had to kind of adjust the way he played the game because defenses in the NFL changed to try to combat what the Chiefs were doing with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. So he had to become a more precise quarterback, a quarterback that reads the field at an extremely high level, a smart game manager who then when the opportunity presents itself, absolutely can crush you with some breathtaking plays, both with his legs and with his arm. So he's the best quarterback I've ever seen. I think he's the GOAT. Now, number two is Josh Allen, the unicorn of all unicorns in the league right now. He is just an unbelievable quarterback, but Mahomes is really able to limit a lot of the negative plays and still be an unbelievable playmaker. Josh Allen is a little more volatile, and that's why he comes in at number two. He is an unbelievable player, but he's going to he's gonna give the other team opportunities to take the football away. When you're talking about tight football games late in the season, there's going to be times where Josh Allen might have a game that, that uh, ends up costing you. In the clutch, he's probably going to be the reason that you're in the game in the first place, but he might not win it with some uh, wild plays, wonky decisions. Now, three, Joe Burrow, maybe a little high for some, but you know, I, I know that Joe Burrow's dealt with injuries lately. Do not forget who Joe Burrow is when he's on the football field. Joe Cool, he is an absolute killer out there, incredibly accurate with the football, very smart. Uh, he's a gamer. I think that he's going to show people, assuming he's healthy this year just who he is, and that's a MVP caliber quarterback uh, with the weapons around him, with the improved infrastructure um, up front. And then number four, Lamar Jackson. He's in his prime era now. He's got a lot of good pass catchers on the football field. Great passer over the middle. You now get Mark Andrews back. You've got talent at the receiver position. Derrick Henry is now in the backfield next to you. That's unbelievable. I think that Lamar Jackson's going to have a great year, and he's dropped some weight. It's going to be interesting to see how that impacts his game overall. At number five, this is another controversial one. You can see I have the uh, Jags wall art in the background here. I do cover the Jaguars. I love the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence, though, has guided the Jaguars to -to back-to-back winning seasons with very little help around him. You have consistently seen drops. You have consistently seen poor offensive line play. You have seen defenses not holding their end of the bargain. I think that Trevor Lawrence is going to show the world just how good he is in 2024. He's already led the Jaguars to the playoffs, nearly did it last year. Really the only thing that stopped him was injuries. I think you're going to see a healthy Trevor Lawrence going into 2024. It's going to be a massive year for him. Justin Herbert, 
one of my biggest misses at quarterback in the draft. Uh, it, it was hard to see at Oregon what you see now for the Chargers. Uh, part of that had to do with the offense that he was running there. You want him to be a little bit less robotic at times, maybe, but he's so damn good. Unbelievable talent physically. Uh, the size, the athleticism, the arm talent. Justin Herbert's awesome. Takes care of the football. C.J. Stroud at number seven, maybe the best rookie year ever by a quarterback. Uh, you know, let's follow it up. He showed more playmaking than you saw consistently at Ohio State last year uh, with the Houston Texans. He's got great group around him, certainly. Uh, you add Stephon Diggs to that mix. The offensive line looks solid. Great uh, play calling on the offensive side of the ball. The defense should take another step forward here with D'Amico Ryans running things on that side. Uh, I think it's going to be really fun. C.J. Stroud could very easily be higher on this list very quickly uh, after the 2024 season starts. I think Jordan Love could be as well. Like, I think he's that dude. And same draft class as Justin Herbert. I did hit on, on Jordan Love, though. Had him as a first-round caliber prospect. Uh, I think he was in my early to mid-teens that year on my big board. And uh, he, he was awesome last year for the Packers. Uh, started off a little inconsistent, but then you saw – Throughout that season, with Matt LaFleur calling the plays, with Matt LaFleur dialing it up around him, uh, Jordan Love, he kind of took over with his arm talent, You know, can throw off platform, can throw from different odd arm angles. He's a good athlete as well, can do some things with his legs. So I think that he absolutely belongs in this tier, and he's going to show it this year. So those are my top eight quarterbacks, the guys that are in the franchise elevator tier. We're going to go ahead and start with the upper echelon quarterback tier. Right. And that starts with at number nine overall, Dak Prescott, who is an underrated quarterback, was playing like an MVP last year. He's smart, uh, very good pocket management. He can absolutely thread the needle. He puts the ball into some situations that a lot of quarterbacks wouldn't. And he's usually right. He just sees the field that well. and He's got the arm talent. He's gotten a lot of his mobility back uh, since that injury a couple years ago. Um, and he's playing at an extremely high level within that Dallas Cowboys offense, no matter who's calling it, right? Then at number 10, I have Matthew Stafford. Mr. No-Look himself, crazy arm, can throw from all sorts of different odd arm angles, you know, can throw it sidearm. He's super smart. He's become a pro's pro. Uh, he is in the twilight of his career now, it looks like, but still playing at an extremely high level for the Los Angeles Rams. At 11, still in the upper echelon tier, Kyler Murray. I think he's about to pop off. With Marvin Harrison and company, awesome arm, superior athlete. He has not had the support around him from a coaching standpoint. Uh, obviously, was not healthy to start the season last year. Once he got back, started showing some signs of being the Kyler Murray we all know and love. I think he is absolutely a, a guy that could vault himself into the franchise elevator conversation. That's how good he is. Um, and I think that with the Cardinals' current trajectory, He's going to be looking like a guy that the teams really covet around the league here pretty soon. At number 12, Jalen Hurts. He does not have like an elite arm, but he's a great athlete. He has a very good arm. He's a good passer. He's smart. He's a leader. He's tough as nails. He's got the tush push going for him. He gives you enough to be a catalyst when things are right around him. Like the Eagles fell apart last year. There was a lot going wrong. I think that Jalen Hurts is still a catalyst at quarterback. And then finally, uh, Anthony Richardson here. Two more quarterbacks, sorry, in this tier. Anthony Richardson at number 13. I know this is early to have him this high. We have not seen him play very much football. But I think if he's healthy with his arm talent, the way he plays the game, his athleticism, his ability to run the ball, his size, uh, I think with Shane Steichen dialing it up, he can be one of those guys that you win because of. Because that athletic, athletic talent, arm talent, it's, it's almost unparalleled in this league. Very few quarterbacks with the type of tools that an Anthony Richardson has. At number 14, uh, the final guy in the upper echelon tier, Aaron Rodgers. I don't freaking know. I don't know what he's going to be after the Achilles. I really don't. I, I, I don't know that he needs to have a perfect lower body uh, when it comes to playing quarterback because of just how talented his arm is. But we'll see how it plays out. Uh, I think that if he's healthy, he's definitely an upper echelon starter in this league. And then now we get to the good starters tier. And for me, it kicks off with Brock Purdy. 
This is a guy that you can absolutely win with in the right situation, and you're seeing the right situation play out in San Francisco. They've got awesome pieces on offense, a very good defense. Kyle Shanahan, who is one of the best offensive minds in the league today, if not the best, definitely up there, top five, top three, whatever you want to say. Uh, But Brock Purdy, what he brings to that, what he adds to that that you haven't really seen necessarily during Kyle Shanahan's time there is the playmaking, is the YOLO, the gamer, right? Uh, He can be accurate with the football, but he's got just enough athleticism, just enough playmaking uh, to elevate that offense a little bit more than what you've seen from some other quarterbacks there in San Francisco. Then at number 16, we've got Jared Goff, who I know Detroit Lions fans are not going to be happy with this ranking. I still think he's a good starter. I absolutely do. But to me, he just doesn't give you the ceiling from an arm talent perspective, from an athleticism perspective, playmaking, to have him higher on this list, bottom line. Kirk Cousins, kind of in a similar similar, you know, range for me. Right after him, at 17 overall, I absolutely think uh, you can win with him in a good situation, but you've also got the Achilles to think about. I'm not sure how it's going to play out. I think that there's a lot of good pieces in Atlanta to surround Kirk Cousins, but uh, I just think that you haven't seen him elevate it in the playoffs the way some of these other guys have or or have the ability to. Uh, then at 18, we have Tua Tagovailoa, Miami Dolphins. Things have been really good around him uh, for the most part. He's in an offense where he's asked to get the ball out quickly. That's what he does well, and he's able to feed it to Tyreek Hill, to Jalen Waddle, to all these speedsters. Um, what would it look like if he was in a different offense? I'm not sure, but all we can tell is that he's been a pretty good starting quarterback, you know, pretty productive pretty accurate, gets the ball out quickly, um, can make some big plays uh, in this Mike McDaniel offense. That's all we've seen. That's all we know. At 19, I've got Geno Smith, Seattle Seahawks starting quarterback, one of the best vertical strike passers in the league right now. I think that it's going to be a really interesting pairing with their new uh, offensive coordinator from Washington who did a lot of that at Washington. Obviously, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to, have to change things up a little bit at the NFL level going from uh, Washington, obviously Power 5, championship-type football, uh, but you're going to have to change things up a bit. It'll be interesting to see how that offense works. But Geno Smith, very good vertical strike passer. Baker Mayfield at 20 overall, uh, really kind of found himself again over the last couple years. I think going to L.A. for a little bit really helped him out. Then getting... uh, to Tampa to work with some of those receivers and some of that talent they have there. It's reinvigorated what he can do as a quarterback. He doesn't have an elite arm. He's not a very good athlete, but he has enough gamer in him, enough uh, of, of arm talent within him to do a good enough job when you do have guys like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, a good offensive line. Uh, good play caller who just got poached. So we're going to see how it plays out there in Tampa. Then at 21, Russell Wilson is in this tier for me. I think that in the right situation, Russell Wilson can get, still get the job done. Will it be the right situation in Pittsburgh? I think they've massively upgraded their offensive line. Uh, I think it's interesting they decided to get rid of Deontay Johnson, but they do still have pickings. I love that they went and got uh, my guy out of out of Michigan, Roman Wilson, to, to be a pass catcher there. They've got good tight ends, Pat Fryermuth. Uh, Washington, obviously. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out in Pittsburgh, but I think in the right situation, you can win with Russell Wilson. Uh, Then the maybe tier has two guys, 22 and 23 overall, Bryce Young and Will Levis. I just don't think we've seen enough from them with with a real uh, group of of talent around them, with a real support around them to, to really evaluate what they can be. I think that they both have the talent. We'll see what happens. Uh, Then 24, Through 28, this is the rookie tier. Caleb Williams starts off the rookie tier for me. My highest graded rookie. I think he's in a fantastic situation in Chicago. At 25, Drake May. uh, Not the best situation in New England, but unbelievable talent. He has some physical traits similar to like a Justin Herbert, uh, a Trevor Lawrence, 
one of those types of guys, Jordan Love, um, where I think he can just do so much physically. Uh, it's all coming for Drake May, and I think he's going to be a fantastic quarterback in the NFL. Jaden Daniels, uh, he's my next quarterback. Do not like the situation he's in outside of the pass catchers, which obviously helps a lot. Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, uh, but I worry about the offensive line. I worry about the defense. I worry about the offensive system he's being dropped in. going to be interesting to see how that plays out. At 27, Bo Nix. I do have him out of J.J. McCarthy. I like Bo Nix a little more than J.J. McCarthy. I have them in the same tier. Uh, when I ranked them in the NFL draft, they were in the same tier for me. Bo Nix is older. J.J. McCarthy's a lot younger, less experienced. I think they're both leaders. I think that Bo Nix has shown just a different level of accuracy. And everybody wants to talk about J.J. McCarthy, uh, his athleticism he brings to the field. Bo Nix is a very good athlete as well. J.J. has a bigger arm. He can put more spin on it. He can put more velocity on the football. Bo Nix is a better passer right now when you talk about all three levels of the field being able to be accurate. He can put enough heat on it. He can also throw with touch, something J.J. McCarthy struggles to do a little bit right now. So I have Bo Nix ahead of J.J. McCarthy, even though I think J.J. is in a much, much better situation. Now, if your favorite team's quarterback is not on this list, that means you need to get a new one. That means you have a replacement level starter. That's the Raiders, the Giants, the Saints, and yes, the Cleveland Browns. I do not believe in Deshaun Watson. I do not believe in Derek Carr, Daniel Jones, or Gardner Minshew slash Aiden O'Connell. I love Aiden O'Connell. I love Gardner Minshew as well, but I'm sorry. I just don't see them as, as legitimate starting quarterbacks in this league. I, I really don't. Uh, so Raiders, Giants, Saints, Browns, go find yourself a quarterback. Now, Deshaun Watson could prove me wrong, and if he does, I'll eat crow, but I just don't see it, and quite frankly, I cannot remove the off-field situations with Deshaun Watson from my evaluation. I also can't remove the fact that he just hasn't been very good in Cleveland, right? He has not. We'll see how it plays out, but that is my 2024 quarterback rankings and tiers. Would love to know what y'all think. Drop your comments in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Y'all have a good one.